Well, now to the murder case in Lovell, Wyoming, where new information comes as the suspect makes his initial appearance today in Bighorn County Court in Wyoming. q 2 Asia Gore paged through the court documents and is here to bring us the chilling details tonight. Asia. Well, Jane Janelle, those disturbing notes show a man obsessed plotting his ex-wife's murder for days. 48-year-old Donald Kraus is charged with first-degree murder for the death of 49-year-old Carol Barnes. The victim was stabbed to death in an apartment on West 7th Street in Lovell. Barnes' son asked officers to conduct a welfare check after she sent him a text for help. Officers arrived to find Barnes dead in the living room and nearby handwritten letters signed and dated by Kraus. In one note dated four days before the murder, Kraus said he feared he had missed his opportunity to kill Barnes. He writes, quote, I pray she so shows up with the oil for dinner and that I didn't miss my chance when I backed out both those times. I just need to have this last chance and I won't mess it up. I'll get the job done, end quote. Officers tracked down and arrested Kraus more than 200 miles away in Mills, Wyoming. He's currently in custody. Jane Janelle. All right, thanks, Asia. Jury selection underway here in Yellowstone County today for a man accused of raping a young Billings girl multiple times. 22-year-old Tristan Morales is charged in Yellowstone County District Court with one count each of rape and tampering with evidence. Prosecutors say Morales raped the victim twice, once when she was three years old and again when she was eight. When questioned by detectives, Morales allegedly admitted to the rape but blamed his actions on others. Morales also reportedly said he did not want to register as a sex offender because it would hurt his chances of becoming a school counselor. Opening statements in the case are set for tomorrow. The Yellowstone County Jail just months away from fixing its decades-old overcrowding issue. The multi-million dollar expansion project broke ground back in March. Q2 Samantha Harrelson takes us inside for a look at the progress. It's an effort by, by all. Uh, I've got some staff that's just dedicated to it. Uh, working with the contractors and some co subcontractors have been fantastic. Construction of the Yellowstone County Detention Facility is well underway as the jail moves towards a finish state in April. The expansion, which will eventually hold the jail's female population, will consist of five units, maximum security, medium security, and dormitory type living for the low risk offenders. Uh, bunks on the bottom, bunks at the top, so you got two, four, six, eight, they're going to have to share the desks, same over here, and the same up, up there. So you're going to have uh, um, 32 people in here in, the, in this dorm unit. The project will help remedy the massive overcrowding which has plagued the jail for years. In addition to the new units, Captain Bofto showed us the new kitchen and storage area being built to accommodate their growing numbers. You know, legally, uh, we're, we're in charge of custody and care of the inmates, and that's medical, that's taking care of, make sure they're fed, make sure they're safe, and this will help us in that quest to, to do that. After construction is complete, inmates will cycle through the new building, allowing much-needed maintenance to be done on the existing units. After all the units are updated, the women will move into the building for good. The space will eliminate the need for some inmates to sleep on the floor and increase the safety and security of the women. You can't thank any one person. It, 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 it took the village to build this. Samantha Harrelson, MTN News, Billings. And Sammy tells us so far the county is on schedule and on budget. Captain Bofto says he hopes to be able to move inmates in April. A $1.4 billion pipeline to transport natural gas liquids from eastern Montana to Kansas would be in service by the end of 2019. That under a proposal by the Tulsa-based energy company One Oak. The Elk Creek pipeline would have the capacity to transport up to 240,000 barrels of natural gas liquids per day from a terminal near Sydney down to Bushton, Kansas. It would cross the states of Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and Kansas along the way. Now, the company says additional pumping facilities could expand the pipeline's capacity up to 400,000 barrels a day. One Oak president and CEO Terry Spencer says the new pipeline is critical to help producers meet natural gas capture targets in effect across the Williston Basin. Right now, North Dakota producers uh, produce more than 400,000 barrels of natural gas liquids each day. That includes ethane, propane, and butane. The production expected to double by the year 2030. 
One Oak currently operates a 37,000-mile network of pipelines that transport natural gas and natural gas liquids. And the firm also has processing plants and other facilities in the Williston and Permian basins, as well as the Gulf Coast region. Rural America is getting more connected. At an American Farm Bureau Federation conference today, President Trump signed an executive order to expand broadband access in rural areas. Supporting broadband tower facilities in rural America and federal properties managed by the Department of the Interior. Those towers are going to go up and you are going to have great, great broadband. Nearly 23 million rural Americans, though, lack access to high-speed Internet service. This executive order directs the Department of the Interior to develop a plan to allow private high-speed broadband companies to co-locate their equipment on interior infrastructure. The Interior Department owns as much as 83 percent of the land in some western states. Now here in Montana, independent rural telecommun uh, telecommunication providers cover more than 70 percent of the state with high-speed broadband internet. According to the Montana Telecommunication Association, as of mid-2016, more than 20,000 miles of fiber optic infrastructure has been installed across Big Sky Country. All of Montana's rural schools are connected to high-speed internet, and 69 percent of all Montanans currently have access to broadband internet. Since 2011, nearly $250 million has been invested by rural providers for fiber optic internet technology that average out to about thirty thousand dollars per mile or about ten thousand dollars per rural Montana. Just this past October the Montana Public Service Commission secured more than a hundred million dollars in federal funds to help support the development of broadband here in Montana. In Montana there are 121 internet providers but 210,000 people have access to only one provider. And about 50,000 Montana still have no wired internet providers where they live. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, we're diving deep into our archives to climb high to a part of the downtown skyline. In a moment, a look at the history of the Sheraton Hotel. And later in sports, college football's national title game kicks off in just 30 minutes. Scott says you won't believe what fans are paying for tickets and even parking. And coming up in weather, whoo, we had a beautiful day today. Temperature got up to 43 degrees. We got one more good day like this, and then more snow and cold moves in midweek. We'll have more about that in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slay.